Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Basic Debugging with Eclipse. In this video, we're going to look at setting breakpoints, starting a debugging session, and using the debugging perspective to debug our program. We'll accomplish this by going through a debugging process with an example program. You'll find some other shorter videos on my channel that show you some of the parts in more detail of this process. Keep in mind that debugging is a two-part process. In part one, we determine the nature and location of a program error. We'll look at some tools in this video for how we can do this. Part two, you need to actually fix the error. I'll also do this by the time the video is complete. For this video, our example will include the following classes. The loan class stores the state of the loan using the fields principal, annual percentage rate as percentage, and a term in years. The loan class also includes a method where we can calculate the monthly payment for the loan. We'll also have an amortization class. The purpose of the amortization class is to calculate and display an amortization table for a loan. To do this, it will include a loan object as a field. Finally, our application will include a controller class. This will be a class with a main method that will set up a loan and amortization object and call the appropriate methods. Let's have a quick look at the application and its components. You'll note in Eclipse that this is a simple Java application. Under a package called Logic, I have the three classes. The amortization class, notice it includes a loaned field, two constructors, a do amortization method, and a getter and setter for the loan field. Also have a loan class. You'll notice that a loan object will have three fields, principal, rate, and term, two constructors, getters and setters, one pair for each of the fields, and a get monthly payment method. The controller class will simply hold a main method to run the program. We'll have a look at the code for these classes as we debug the program. Keep in mind that I'm familiar with the code already as I'm the one who created it. And a good knowledge of your code is very important to debugging because you're the one who knows what your code is supposed to do. One of the first things you need to do before you start to debug is to actually test your program. This is where you get the idea of whether or not there are bugs to fix. To do that, one of the best ways is to test your program using known inputs for which you know what the desired output should be. In this chart, I can see that if I start with a principal of 200,000, an APR of 6%, and a term of 30 years, I should be getting output that is monthly payment of $1,199, the time it takes to zero debt to being the 360th month, the first term interest payment of 1000 a first term principal payment of $199.10, and at the end of the first term, my ending balance should be $199,800.90. There are many other desired outputs that I will see when I run the program, but this should be enough to compare whether it's working correctly or not. So let's run our current version and see what we get. As usual, I will run the program by right-clicking on the project and choosing Run As a Java Application. This program I have set up to where I am going to enter the values using a scanner and the console. So my known value of $200,000 for the principal, a rate of 6%, and 30 years for my term, and let's see what I get. After running the code, I will see in the console an amortization table in a comma-separated format. I see, though, that my desired output does not look as it should. In particular, from the output of the current program, I see that the actual output is a monthly payment of $1,200,000. Doesn't make much sense on a $200,000 loan, does it? Term to zero, well, it did not make it. It went to month 30, and we still owed money. 
The first term interest payment was the full amount of the principal, and the first term principal paid was zero, and the first term ending balance was 200000 These numbers are way out of whack. So we have recognized a bug in our logic, and we need to fix it. Incidentally, there were no error messages when we ran the code. This means that our problems are entirely problems of logic and not syntax, compile, or runtime errors. In general, it's logic errors that often require us to work with special debugging tools like the Eclipse Debugger in order to solve the problem. To get started, you want to first think about what is going on and what should happen compared to what is happening. For example, in this program, it was obvious that our monthly payment was not being calculated correctly. It was actually higher than the principal. If you know anything about a loan, that's not possible. So we're going to have to look at the monthly payment or perhaps how it's being used inside of the amortization table method. After you think about what's going on, think about where in your code would it be beneficial to stop the program and actually see what is going on. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in this video. And at those locations, we're going to do something called setting a breakpoint. If I look at this output, I see that the monthly payment is incorrect and all the other values here. There's a particular method that creates this table, so one thing I might think is let's start looking in that method for what's going on. The method that creates the table is in the amortization class in the do amortization method. So here we go. So one thought might be that I'm having problems starting here. Could be it started earlier or later, but at least I think that the error is showing up here. So it might be beneficial to stop when this method begins and see what are the values that are coming in. So I'm going to create what's called a breakpoint in this method. A breakpoint is simply a statement or line in your code where you want to stop execution of the program and kind of take a look around, see what are the current values for any objects or variables that are currently active. I'm going to set a breakpoint here for line 34, which is pretty much the first line in this method. To do that in Eclipse, move your cursor over to the margin just to the left of the line number, if you're displaying line numbers. If you're not displaying line numbers, the margin will still be there. Right-click in the margin, and you'll notice that the top option in the pop-up menu is Toggle Breakpoint. So let's do that. Toggle basically means to turn something on or off. Since it was off and I hit Toggle, you'll notice now that at that point in my code, there is a little dot to signify that I have a breakpoint. Of course, if I wanted to turn it off, I could right-click on it and hit Toggle, and that would turn it off. Think of Toggle like a light switch, turning something on or off. Let's go ahead and put another breakpoint in our code, down here in the middle of the for loop. And then I'm going to add one more at the return statement. The reason I might want to have multiple breakpoints is that sometimes I'll want to stop, look at something momentarily, and then resume so that it runs the rest of the code up until the next breakpoint. So it's kind of skipping ahead very quickly. We'll see that in action in a little bit when we work with these breakpoints. I could think of other places, but sometimes I think this is a good place to start. So I'm going to start my debugging session with these three breakpoints. I have another shorter, more detailed version that talks a little bit more about breakpoints you can check out on my channel. Now that we've set our breakpoints, we're ready to start a debugging session. To do this, we're going to choose Debug As rather than Run As to run the program. We'll debug it as a Java application. Once we get started, Eclipse will switch to the debug perspective. I'll talk a little bit about that as we see that in the next few minutes. So to get started, I'm going to right-click on the project name itself. Instead of choosing Run As, as we did before to run the program, we'll select Debug As. This one is a Java application, so I will select that option. You'll notice that my perspective immediately changed. On your Eclipse, you may see a message pop up asking you if that's what you want to do. Generally, 
You will want to do that, so click yes. Note also that there is a checkbox. If you put a check in the checkbox, it will never ask you again, as I've set up on my Eclipse. Let's review a few parts of this perspective. I have a more detailed video available about this perspective on my channel. In general, I am going to use three primary windows of the debug perspective. The others I find less useful, but they do have their uses for more advanced debugging. In particular, note in the center, we see our code. We see, actually, one of the lines highlighted. This is where we have our first breakpoint. The line that is highlighted has not actually been executed yet. It's waiting for us to tell it to go ahead and run that line. In this area, we have the variables window. At this point, we can see values for variables that are currently active. Variables is very important because this is where we actually can see the state of values that are happening. Then down in the console, I use this often for two things. One, in this particular program, that's where we're entering our input. But also, any error messages will show up here. The full debug perspective is available in another video on our channel. Another very important part of the debugging perspective are debugging controls, which we can find near the top of the Eclipse window. Here we see a view of those controls blown up a little bit for easier viewing. These controls consist of the following. Step into. When you click on step into, Eclipse will attempt to run the line of code that is currently active. If there are any method calls that need to be resolved within that line, you'll step further down and see code within that method. This one is useful when you want to be able to go down and look at some of the methods that you wrote that you're calling upon within that line. Step over. Step over will do the same thing as step into, except it will run the current line as a complete line without stepping further down into any of the methods needed to resolve that line. This is the one that I use the most because I often want to just run that line completely and go on to the next one that I'm viewing. Step return. This is kind of the opposite of the step into. When you use step return, you're moving back up to the code of the calling method. Resume. This lets you resume executing your program without stepping one line at a time. This can be very useful when you just want it to run to the end of the program after debugging or run to the next breakpoint without having to step over or into the next few lines. Suspend. This is where you can pause the program. Perhaps you notice something you want to edit and change. You can pause, make that edit, and then resume. Terminate. This basically stops the execution of the program altogether. We'll see those in action in the following debugging process. Let's get started by stepping over to execute the current line. We'll enter a $200,000 principal. We'll step over again and enter a rate of 6. Notice something else up in the variables section. Because the last few lines we created two new variables and provided values, we can see the value of those variables. So currently we see that principal has been entered as 200,000 and rate has been entered in as 6. So it's this process of stepping through our code and checking the values of the variables that we will use to solve this problem and find out what is going on in our code. Another important thing to do is that before you run any line, you pause and you reflect on what should this line be doing. Think about what it's telling you and what you're telling the program to do with this instruction. The next line will prompt the user for the years. Let's step over and see it in action. Enter a term of six years. The next line will create a loan object using the input values. This time, let's use step into to have a look at the constructor code. One thing to be aware of with step into is that sometimes you will see code from JCL classes.
Here we see some code in the JCL class loader class. Often you can continue clicking step into until you see code that you have written. You see now that we have visible the loan class and we can start stepping over those lines. Now note up in the variable section, here's something else that's interesting. Currently, there is a this object that has a value loan that is displayed in the variables. Let's expand that. We can see the values of the loan field. So far, I have clicked through over the principal and we see that the principal field for the loan has been set. Let's set the term. If I step over, the term has now been set to 6, which is the value of the local variable. If objects are currently active, they can be displayed in the variable section, and you can expand them to see the current state of those objects. Let's see what happens if we do step return. Notice it ran the next line, and now we have all of our values set. A better way to get further inside your code is to set multiple breakpoints. In this case, I have also set a breakpoint at the first line of the do amortization method of the amortization class. We can click resume and our code will run until it encounters that next breakpoint. Now we see that the execution has stopped at the next breakpoint inside the do amortization method. Eclipse has paused execution and is waiting for us to take control once again. Before resuming, let's take a quick look at the current state. Let's expand the object called this in the variables window. We see that this contains a loan object. Further expanding lets us see the instance variable values of the loan object. Let's step over the next few lines. Watch the list of variables in the variables window. We see that a balance variable and an amortization table string variable have been added to the list. By the time we get to line 48, the balance has been set to the principal, and the header line of our table has been added to the amortization table string. Okay, that makes sense. So far, so good. Now I can go into a loop where I'm going to create the numerical values displayed in the amortization table. So what should happen when I click step over is that we'll start the loop and we'll set a variable called month equal to one. We'll check it against the loan term, which I can see is six. Okay, now I see that month is now one, which should be good. I'm gonna add that to the table. The next line, I should get the monthly payment. My desired number is a 1,199. Let's see what happens here. I check. I've added that to the table. I can see that, no, that's a million two hundred and something. So that is definitely incorrect. So I notice that an error is showing up here. But these, these lines of code look okay to me. Perhaps I need to be using some other values in these calculations, or perhaps the problem is really in my loan. In this next line, let's go a little bit deeper and step into. We see as I step into that I'm getting into some of the string builder functions. Notice I have the variable rate. The rate is six, that makes sense. But you know, as I look at my monthly payment, I'm seeing some errors. Basically, my formula should be using a monthly rate. Recall that APR is a yearly rate. So my formula should be using a monthly rate. And my term, instead of years, should be using a set of months. So perhaps that's one thing I need to fix. 
So often you'll be stepping through, looking through code, and one of the important things about debugging is it makes you concentrate on the lines of code and what's happening. The rate itself is not so bad if I want a monthly rate. However, in my monthly payment calculation, what I noticed once I'm looking at loan is I'm using yearly values instead of monthly. So let's stop the program. I prefer to edit back in the Java perspective. So let's see if I can fix this a bit. I'm going to change this formula to rate to a monthly rate. Let's change that to divide by 12. Another aspect of this is the 6 should also be a percent. So let's also divide by 100. Okay, those changes are complete here. Let's save the project and try running it again. I usually like to straight up run the program to see if it is fixed and then go to debugging mode again, only if it is not. Let's enter our input values. Let's have a look at the results. The monthly payment now is a consistent $1,199.10. But the other values are still incorrect. They are way too high. Looking at the results, I suspect that we next will need to correct the interest paid formula. going to hit my first break point right here in the middle of here. I'm going to hit continue because I don't need to really stop in the main method. Let's enter 200,000, enter 6, enter years. Okay. While we're here, let's check the value of this amortization object. It has a loan and it has a principal 200,000 and a rate 6 and a term 30. Let's resume the program so that it stops inside of the loop because everything works up until that point. We're confident of that. So I hit continue. We can see that the amortization table string has been created up to a certain point. We can see that the balance is currently 200,000. We have our two formatters and we have our month equal to one. So when I run this one, it should add one to the amortization table string. Notice it did, and a comma. Next, it should calculate and add a monthly payment. Okay, and it did. Now it's going to get the rate. Recall that the rate is a yearly rate, and it's not a percentage. If we step over, this should give us something less than $1,199, but we see that it gave us $1.2 million. So we know that that value is out of whack. Let's stop the program. Let's make some corrections in this area. I'm going to make sure that my rate is now divided by 12 and divided by 100. Multiply it times the balance. Need to do that everywhere I have rate. Divided by 12 divided by 100. I can start a debugging session again from the debugging area once I've made some changes by clicking on Debug Controller. Notice it went there. I'll resume. Enter in my values. Now let's see what's happening. Let's resume up to the next breakpoint. The month is one was added. The monthly payment of $1,199 was added correctly. 
Look at that. Now a monthly rate, a monthly interest paid of $1,000 was added correctly, and that is my correct value. Next, I should have about $199.10. That was added correctly. Now the balance should be roughly $199,000. Let's click Resume to cycle through the loop. It's going to stop every time I go there, so I have to do that for a while. Or I could even toggle the breakpoint. Resume. Now we got all of it. Oh, the numbers look good, but notice the term is not going. It's still going to 30 years. So how can I change that? Well, in this loop, the term is specified by the loop constraint. I'm going to stop. I'm going to fix that line of code by doing multiply times 12. Now let's debug again. Get here. Let's resume. Check out my values, looking good so far. Let's resume down to the bottom of the loop. I check out what's been paid here. Uh, look at that. Everything's looking pretty good now. Up to 240, then not. So let's resume so it will end the program and we should see down in the console that it is completed all the way up to 360 with a zero payment due. So to summarize, we noticed an error in a, the logic of our program. We decided where some good places would be in our code that we should stop and actually see what was going on, and we set breakpoints at that point. Then we entered a debugging session. In the debugging session, we were able to step through our code, running exactly the lines of code that we wanted to, and have it stop at key locations so that we could review what values were going on. We also saw that in the debugging session, we can make some corrections and then debug again. Hopefully, this example gives you an idea how you might debug your code using the Eclipse debugger. Please check out the other videos that describe some of the components and tools we use from the debugger in more detail. For more information, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music includes various piano selections that are performed by Craig A. Piercy. This has been a Piercy production.